Thank you. It's pretty cool being up here. It makes my uh, my slide deck in plain text look a little uh, look a little less intimidating here. So we'll see what we got. Well, thank you, first of all, everyone for coming to Avalanche Summit. It's amazing to meet, you know, all the creators here and see all the, you know, the massive uh, energy and the excitement, especially all the amazing projects you guys are working on. So, you know, first of all, I want to give a round of applause to you guys. You know, we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you so much for coming. So um, <clears throat> folks that don't know me, my name is Patrick O'Grady. I'm the head of engineering here at, at Avalabs. Uh, and that means really one thing, is that uh, I get to work with a team of fantastic and extremely motivated people that make me look really good. <laughs> so uh, all the work you see uh, the Avalabs team do, anything you see with Avalanche Go, um, I'm usually the first to tweet about it, but I'm usually the one that does the least work on it. So, uh, you know, I think we wouldn't be here without them. And, you know, I think uh, I just wanted to start off and, and, you know, say thanks to all those guys because uh, they've done phenomenal work over the last couple of years. So. So, um, you know, I think because it's the last day of the summit and I, I don't see a goon in the back, I went meme heavy because I thought it'd be more fun. So uh, we'll start with that. So um, to jump right into it, you know, any talented engineering team uh, starts when they're, when they're working on a project, they don't start with the solution first and then back into what the problem they're trying to solve is. You start with the problem and then go into what the solution you're trying to solve is. And, um, you know, I like to think we're not an exception to that. And, uh, you know, to understand subnets and how they help Avalanche scale, it first starts, it, it's first important to understand where the problem comes from. So, you know, in today's world, we have like hundreds of thousands, hope, you know, maybe millions of people <clears throat> trying to use blockchains. And what that means is that there's a huge demand for block space. Uh, and as that demand for block space continues to grow over the next few years, um, the way that you see that is in the form of fees. You know, I think this is a, uh, this is a picture of our stats page that we maintain of C-Chain fees. Um, it has a percentile of, uh, you know, what fee for what, per, like, what part of the day and how much it goes up. And, you know, as more people use the C-Chain, there's going to be more fees. <clears throat> so, what do you do? <laughs> And, you know, I think their uh, solution is many things. Sorry, some of these are blurry because, you know, memes the way that they are. Um, so I didn't realize, I kind of didn't realize how big the screen was here. So you're going to have to deal with it a little bit. Um, so there's a few things you can do, right? You can infinitely increase the block size to try and get more space inside of the blocks, right? You can try to optimize your virtual machine or you can create more chains. Or even better, you know, you can do them all. And so the idea with subnets is not a cop out to say, OK, you know, we're going to have a bunch of unoptimized virtual machines running, just have a ton of them. Instead, the idea is we're going to take the best approaches and ideas for scaling blockchains in general, apply those, and then augment it with all sorts of new techniques for uh, basically horizontally scaling the load of the network. So <clears throat> the way to think about Avalanche and the way to think about subnets is it's a network of networks. Now, many people, you know, when they first come to Avalanche, they first interact with the C chain because of all the amazing applications on there. And they think, okay, you know, this is another EVM thing, right? You know, you have EVM this, EVM that. Um, and EVM is just one of the one ways we, uh, we, we create a VM for, for the space. Now, you know, the C chain is, is over here. <laughs> There's also the X chain, which many people have also integrated with. And I think that was what people interacted with at first. Um, and then you have the P chain. And the p-chain is where most people stake. The p-chain is also where uh, the su like subnet coordination happens. So where validators are actually participating in which subnets, and then it also distributes rewards. Now, <clears throat> a subnet, you know, and understanding what that is, got to make sure I know what slides is. Um, a subnet is really just a subset of validators. Now, the most important part to understand, right, is that a subnet um, when I say a subset of validators means that validators on the subnet have to already be primary network validators. And that people have asked, okay, why is this? You know, why can't I just create my subnet? Why can't I just do my thing? I have to be a validator too. Well, the reason for that is that there's a number of different uh, interconnectivity tricks we can use 
uh, to power different sort of cross subnet data transfer um, and interesting scaling mechanisms that take advantage of having overlap, overlapping subsets of validators. And so people are saying, okay, well, what if I don't want those things? Well, Avalanche, uh, because of this architecture, also makes the primary network serve as a value well. And so resources and development come back to the Avalanche ecosystem because you can't run a subnet without also participating in Avalanche. And so it, it very uniquely ties the entire ecosystem together, even if you're running your own chain or you're running your own subnet separate to the primary network. <clears throat> so, and then the, uh, there's a few more points here. Uh, the other one is really that subnets, it's opt-in. So, you know, other, other mechanisms, other chains that have horizontal scaling uh, will require validators to participate. You know, if you don't want to validate a particular chain, that's too bad. You know, you're automatically rotated onto any one of those chains. Uh, in Avalanche, when you want to participate in the subnet, it's totally opt-in. So you, if you don't want to participate in any subnets or you don't see the value in it at any point in time, which, you know, you'll probably be in the minority, I would think, <laughs> uh, you know, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. But people that do want to participate can, any, can run any number of subnets once they're actually a validator. So <clears throat> from subnets, we go into chains and virtual machines. And so I have to say, I think this is one of the best memes I've ever made. Uh, <laughs> many people are always curious, you know, what is a virtual machine? Uh, and I think these days, most people say literally anything. You know, you have this, you have that, you have this. Um, and the idea is subnets, the hierarchy, very simply. You know, you have subnets, you have this subset of validators. Any subnet can contain any number of chains. And a chain is just an instantiation of a virtual machine. Now, the virtual machine you may run may be provided by someone else, or you may create your own virtual machine. And when you create your own virtual machine, you have full reign to do whatever you want. Now, one of the big approaches or one of the big ideas um, with Avalanche in particular is this VM interface is so core to what we do, we really didn't want to try to cut off developers from what they could do with this virtual machine or make it so restrictive that it took years to figure out how to use it or something like that. So when you write a virtual machine, all you have to do is implement four methods, very simply. You parse blocks, you verify blocks, you accept blocks, and you reject blocks. Anything else you want to do on top of that, we don't care. <laughs> you, can, you can do anything inside of that. So one example, obviously, is the EVM. And so we wrote a virtual machine that's compatible with this interface. So if you take a look at the subnet EVM, for example, or Core ETH, you'll see that it you know, implements these few methods. Um, but you, know, you could do anything. Now, the other thing that it also allows you to do is you actually don't even need to have any blocks on your virtual machine. In its purest form, it's just a P2P framework. So you could have a blockless virtual machine that just takes advantage of the network overlay that Avalanche provides for all the validators that are also in your subnet. So you could create like a private data sharing um, subnet that people just gossip to each other that also are part of your subnet. Uh, you can also have private subnets so that only validators can actually connect to each other. And uh, I think has been covered many times. I think uh, Dan Lane had a talk on networking. Um, all of the network traffic between validators is encrypted using TLS certificates. So you can have you know, a KYC fully locked down subnet if you, if you so choose that just gossips. So you know, what we're trying to provide here is uh, you know, a place to play in many ways. The coolest things I've ever created as an engineer were me doing random things that I thought like, oh, I wonder if that'll work. And when you have too strict of a framework, it can really cut off you know, some of the innovation and engineering that great engineers want to bring to the table. And so a lot of what we're trying to do is just provide this low level framework and then help build tooling on top of it to support people that want a common path. But people that want to go from scratch, you know, I'm here for the hackathon. So <laughs> happy to help you if you want to do that. Now, the thing that people don't really realize about how Avalanche works, and when I say it's a network of networks, is when I talk about Avalanche and the way I think about Avalanche, is Avalanche is a hydra. It's multi-headed, many chains, many subnets. You know, the first virtual machine we tackled was the EVM. And when I say tackled, I mean, we took uh, work that's other people have done that's absolutely amazing, replaced the networking state layers with things that were fit within the Avalanche virtual machine interface, and then provided the virtual machine experience like you would interact with any other EVM chain. 
Now, <clears throat> let's just say you wanted to take Bitcoin. You could do the exact same thing. Let's say that you, know, you were like, hey, the Solana EVM, like the Solana virtual machine, great for me. All my apps are audited, ready to go on Solana. Port it, put it on top of a VM. The idea with Avalanche is that we're trying to create a framework that you can take any virtual machine in any language and run it on top of the consensus networking and state that Avalanche Go provides. So people are like, okay, you know, what's the, what about the next chain? What about the next thing that's created? Well, you know, we'll have that virtual machine too, right? So the idea is that we can focus on providing this low level framework and then empower people to keep building virtual machines. And if, ones, if other ones become popular, bring them into Avalanche. So I made this drawing at like 4.30 a.m. It's one of my, one of my finer, finer pieces here. I think there's about a, a, you know, 100 different images of subnets and how they look with each other. Um, and so uh, I saw this, I put a few pastel colors on it, and I was like, this is exactly what I want to say. So <clears throat> this is supposed to showcase that subnets, you know, stacking sub, uh, subsets of validators uh, comprise the primary network. Now, the primary network, you know, is the pivot point where stake is managed, where validator participation is managed, and where, uh, you know, all these sort of interesting interconnectivity features will, will arise from. Now, <clears throat> the idea um, with this sort of, uh, you know, uh, abstraction, right, is that we can't scale everything we want to put on a blockchain in a single way. And so spreading it out on these separate groups of validators is the way that we see the, the future going here. And you know, we're obviously really, really, really gonna push that hard. Um, so I think that leaves most people though saying, all right, so you know, everything's connected here. Does that mean anything related to subnets has to go through the primary network? And then like, what's the scaling benefit, right? Like, cause all of it still goes to everybody. Well, <clears throat> the way I explain this is, uh, and like everyone's heard the, uh, the joke, if a tree falls in the forest, uh, and no one's around to hear it, did it actually fall? Now, the way subnets work and the way subnet architecture works is only the validators or people that are interested in a particular subnet actually hear about any of the traffic that happens on that subnet. So, you know, for example, in the last couple weeks to prepare for the summit and the hackathon, I think I've spun up somewhere around 50 different subnets. <laughs> I think only two of them still exist. And uh, the ones that don't exist, the 48, no one's around to care, so there's nothing going on on them, <laughs> you know? And so this, it's a, in the same way, you know, let's just say that you didn't care about one of those other subnets that took a lot of CPU, took a lot of networking, was a really expensive virtual machine to run, doesn't impact your experience as a validator, or if you have another subnet, doesn't impact your ability to validate that subnet on the same network. Um, and so uh, when you think about the way subnets work, is we're multiplexing and handling the complexity of running a node for you, and Avalanche Go is just a harness for you to run multiple virtual machines. What happens from there is ideally optimized to minimize the uh, unnecessary load that you have to bear as a, as a validator um, so that you can uh, scale up the network. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, everything's opt-in, you know, and I think the other part of this, because of this flexible framework, is what we're trying to optimize for is also a lack of gatekeepers. So to create a subnet on the primary network, it costs you two of aux plus one transaction fee to pay to add a subnet validator. Now compare that to many of these other networks. Uh, when you want to create your own chain, it's far, far more expensive and you typically have to pay some, you know, continuous rent or something like that to keep your subnet or your, your chain alive. In Avalanche, you know, you want to try it, <laughs> throw two of aux at it, create it. Oh, it didn't work. Bummer. Try again, <laughs> create another one. And I think the idea here is uh, by, by limiting the barrier to entry, the goal is to tackle this long tail of innovation. So you may be wondering, great, you know, subnets this, I can create my own custom virtual machine. But the, this talk, Patrick, is about scaling, scaling avalanche with subnets. You haven't really talked, <laughs> you know, specifically what that does for me. What about my gas prices? How do those go down? So the framework I use to think about what subnets provide from a capacity perspective is what is the maximum number of overlapping subsets you can have, assuming that the virtual machine that each one of those subsets of validators takes full compute. 
So let's say that the, running the primary network or something like that takes maybe 10% of capacity. And now everyone wants to run another virtual machine that takes up the remaining 90% capacity of your node. And let's just say, you know, because um, people are like, okay, well, like if I run another subnet that takes so much capacity, I can only run one. So let's just say that's the case. So <clears throat> if you do that, let's say you have 1,300 validators. Unique validators per subnet, let's say, is five. And then you say you apply some value for the throughput there based on the virtual machine you're running. Now, the EVM, you may not be able to clock that thing out at two or 3,000 per second. <laughs> but if you have a different virtual machine, you may be able to. And so the way you think about the maximum capacity of the entire network, or really the available block space for people to participate, is a function that looks something like this. Now, there's going to be another coefficient here, which I didn't include to keep it simpler, which is you know, maybe there's an overlapping premium where you don't want one subnet to take all your CPU. But we'll go through a simple example, right? So let's say you have 1,300 validators, and maybe you have five validators per subnet. Each one of those validators participates in one subnet and runs one virtual machine, and they don't participate in anything else. You could then say each one of those subnets is targeting a capacity of 200 TPS. Let's say in that case, you have a very simple virtual machine, maybe not as complicated as the EVM. You can get a total global throughput far higher than any one of those single chains. Now, if I told you, hey, I have this, this chain, this virtual machine, it can hit 200,000 TPS. Like, watch this, I'm gonna show you, right? You know, most engineers would be skeptical that a single blockchain can hit that sort of capacity. But if I said, hey, you know, like, we're, we really optimize this code, we built this virtual machine, we have a smaller set of validators, I think we can hit 250 TPS. You'd be like, yeah, 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 I, I can understand that. Like, I, that makes sense to me conceptually. Now I'm gonna add, you know, 300 of those. Because they don't share the networking load, any one of these unique subnets doesn't have to actually participate in any others. You can achieve a sort of capacity without putting that same burden on all the other participants in the network. And so the, the vision and the way that scaling happens with subnets is take away the staking and the membership complexity, put it on the P chain, have all your application specific logic only be shared with the validators in your particular subnet using whatever sort of custom VM you want for your particular use case, such that you can optimize it to the nth degree. And we very, very strongly believe and are very excited about what that unlocks for people that are creating their own blockchains and how much easier that makes it. So <laughs> where that takes us then is, you know, what sort of experience or interface do we provide? Now, the whole point is we don't want guardrails here. We want to enable people to do crazy stuff. And to do crazy stuff, we have to make a very general framework. In the same way, if you're not careful, <laughs> you know, you can get in trouble. So, you know, when you're thinking about your blockchain and thinking about the things you want to create in your subnet, you know, there's a lot of things to consider, a lot of good practices to follow. And in the same way, you can get in, get in trouble with any of these bad, <laughs> you know, it's a kind of a double-edged sword, right? So what we're trying to provide at Ava Labs is tons and tons of tooling so that you don't have to think about so many of these problems or maybe don't have to get caught up in any of these maybe more dangerous design patterns. So if you want to take a look at some stuff, and I'm, I'm kind of running out of time right now, so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. But, uh, you know, subnets, the last thing I really want to say is subnets right now, we know we unveiled this $290 million incentive program to, called Multiverse to sponsor the growth of subnets. Um, and people are like, all right, is this it, right? Like, I can, you know, I have these proof of authority subnets, and, you know, I, I can't really have any bridging that happens natively, you know, is, is this all you're gonna give us? No, <laughs> you know, and what we're really trying to target in the next year or so, and this is our, you know, development roadmap, and we hear you, right? We want, we hear the features you guys want, we hear what you're, what you're asking for, and, you know, we're very interested in provide, providing permissionless validation. We're interested in providing cross subnet bridging, and right now, what we're trying to do is just get the use of the VM interface and the VMs off the ground. And then over time, we'll continue to augment that with all sorts of different features that anyone would want. So that you as an individual developer don't have to re-implement the wheel every single time you try to create your virtual machine. So, you know, everyone wants bridges, right? So like, okay, you could run your own EVM to EVM bridge, or, you know, we'll provide a native bridging facility. So the idea is that for any of these common design patterns, we'll provide a happy path. You can choose to use it if you want to. We're not going to make you use it. 
but the idea is that you know, you, you'll be empowered as a developer to do that. So a um, few things, I think, I'm, I think I'm already a minute over time here, so I'm going to have to kind of run through this. Um, one of the big tools we provide is called the Subnet EVM. You know, I'll be around, preface this with, I'll be around for the hackathon. Um, there's a number of different tools we've created to make it easy to create your own subnet. So, you know, you can create your own subnet EVM in about 60 seconds locally. So if you want to play around with your own EVM, you want to make tweaks, you want to play around with it, no better tool. There's a QR code, maybe you can scan it real quick if anyone wants it. Shout out to the Coinbase ad with the Super Bowl that gave me the idea for this. So, um, if you don't want to do that, it's subnet-evm.xyz. Um, likewise, we've been spending a lot of time on stateful precompiles. So shout out to Aaron Buckwald, who, you know, one of the main ideas behind this. Um, if you want to check out the thread <laughs> on stateful precompiles, uh, you can check that out. And then we have one more, which is the subnet cli, which is a tool that everyone has really been using lately to deploy subnets. One click of a button, you can deploy an entire subnet with a ledger. Um, so really useful to get things off the ground. There's also a QR code for that. <laughs> so. All right, so I think I'm done here. This is, while, uh, while I get shown off the stage, uh, this is a, my hackathon wish list for anyone that's trying to create something really cool subnet related. Um, the really big one is the subnet UI. I'm, a, I'm not a UI guy, so <laughs> I, I drop memes and I use clies. So if anyone wants to do anything really cool, to make it easier to manage a subnet would be much appreciated. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think we have time for questions, unfortunately, but I'll be around if you have questions. Thank you. Awesome, good job. Thanks.